Okay, up till this point, as we've been talking about factoring quadratic equations, or quadratic expressions, we've only been talking about expressions. There's been no equal sign, right? So up to this point, it's just been, you know, practicing factoring without really understanding why, okay? Today, we're going to talk briefly about why factoring is so valuable and so helpful um, with quadratics. And in particular, when you see the word solving or finding the zeros or finding the roots, those all mean the same thing when you're talking about quadratic equations. Okay? And in order to solve or in, in order to find the zeros, in order to find the roots, you have to have an equation. Right? That's true with anything. You can't solve for x unless you have an equation, right? You have to have an equation. 2 plus x equals 10. Now you can solve for x. But if you have 2 plus x, you can't solve for x. Because you've got to know what it equals in order to solve for x, right? The same thing's true with quadratics. You've got to have an equation. Now the question is, what are we trying to find when we're trying to find the zeros or find the roots or solve? meaning solve for the unknown, solve for x, right? You are trying to find, if I graph a quadratic equation, let's see, I want to be sure this is on my video. If I, if I do a graph, that worked, okay. If I do a graph, and what does a quadratic equation look like? Let me know. See up there, y is equal to x squared? See that up on that poster up there? It's a, oh, it's, a it's a parabola, right? So in that particular case, y equals x squared, right? It came down here at 0, 0, and then it came back up again. So the question is, when they ask you to solve or find the zeros or find the roots, they're asking you to, to find the x-intercepts. That all equals find the x-intercepts. And eventually you'll understand why that's so valuable because you'll see real live word problems where you're going to see why finding the x is so important. But for now I just want to, I want you to just understand that in this case the x-intercept is at zero, 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 right? Okay, in this case, I'll do another one, right? So in this case, the x-intercept is down here, right? I don't know where, maybe here, right? And, um, excuse me, that's not the x-intercept, that's the vertex, what am I saying? The x-intercepts are here and here, right? That's what you're solving for. And when they say zeros, find the zeros, what would have to be zero for you to have a y, an x-intercept? Y, right? In other words, if, if y is anything other than 0, you're not going to be on the x-axis, right? y has to be 0 in order for you to be on the x-axis, right? So that's the key, is you're looking for what is x when y equals 0. So if I gave you something like this, now the homework, I'm not going that, I'm not doing this far, but I'm going to do it here in the lecture. If I said, um, we'll, just, we'll just keep it simple, let's say y is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 3. And I actually asked you to solve this. In other words, find solve for x. Find the zeros. Find the roots. When, that, when, when you're asked to do that, you are asked to find out what x is when y equals 0. Okay, with me? So I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to say x plus 2, I like my zeros on the right, so I'm just doing it that way, it doesn't matter, equals 0. I have now created something I can solve x for x. I can solve for x now. Because up here I can't because there's two unknowns and there's only one equation. Remember back when we were talking about systems of equations? If you have one unknown and one equation, you can solve it always. If you have two unknowns, how many equations do you have to have? 
equations. Two equations. If you have three unknowns, three equations. Ten unknowns, you need ten equations. Right? That's the way it works. So here we have two unknowns, but since they said find the zeros or solve, find the roots, I know now that they're saying when y is zero. So I'm just changing y equals zero. Now, there is this amazing rule. The zero pro product, pro product, what is that? Oh, gosh. The zero product property rule, zero product. Yeah, I think so. All right, so um, can I erase that? You got the idea. We're just solving for the x-intercept, right? So I can erase that because I need the space. <coughs> This is an amazing rule. It's called the zero, I hope, <laughs> product. All these rules have, you know, depending on which book you look in, they have it slightly worded differently. But zero product property rule. Or maybe it's just property. Zero product property. If, and this is what the rule says. I'll say rule. I don't know. This is what it says. Uh, if A times b equals 0, then either a equals 0 or b equals 0. Right? Do you have notes? You're taking notes? This is, this is the key to solving these. If you know that, sorry. If you know that rule, you will have no trouble solving these. So if A times B, one value times another value equals zero, then either the first value equals zero or the second value equals zero or both of them equals zero, right? There's no other way to get zero. If I had a two times something equals zero, what would that something have to be? Two times zero. It would have to be the only. Yeah, there's an only. The only if you if it's going to equal zero, one of them has to be zero, always, right? Two times zero is zero. Two times point zero 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 one is not zero, right? It's almost zero, but it's not zero. It's the only way to get zero is if one of them is zero. So you use this rule. We'll call this my a. This right here is my a. And this is my b. So if a times b is equal to 0, then either a equals 0, just like that, or, or b equals 0. So I'm going to write it that way. I'm going to say x plus 2 equals 0. And then I'm going to put the word or. x minus 3 equals 0. You with me so far? So now I just solve for x. Subtract 2 from both sides, right? Subtract 2. x is equal to negative 2. This one, add 3 to both sides. I've got x is equal to 3. So there are my roots or my zeros. My zeros. Or my solution. It's all the same thing. You'll see them written in different ways. In, like it's weird that you have three different ways to ask for the same thing. You know, solve. Find the zeros. Find the roots. Find the roots just means to solve for x. Find the zeros. Solve for x when y is zero. Okay? In quadratics, that's always what you're doing. So that was pretty easy, right? So what does that mean, though? That means that on my on my graph over here, it means that at negative 2 on the x-axis, there is my parabola is going to cross at negative 2, and it's going to cross at 3. 1, 2, 3. It crosses at 3. So I know my parabola is going to be something like this, right? I haven't figured out, I haven't told you yet how to find the vertex. This is called the vertex, where, the, where it comes to a point, right? And it switches and starts going up again. Um, we haven't talked about that yet, but, but the main thing is for now, you now know how to find where it crosses the x-axis. So, let me, let's make it slightly harder. Alright, let's say I said 
uh, y is equal to x squared. Um, oh, well, I said I'm going to use that one. Um, x squared. Um, Uh, minus 15. And it says find the x-intercepts, find solve, find the zeros, find the roots. All right, well, I'm going to make y equal to 0 in all of those cases. So I'm going to say x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. Again, I just like my zeros on the right. It just it's a habit. It doesn't matter. You can put the zero equals x squared minus two x minus fifteen. It doesn't matter. But <clears throat> now I'm going to try to factor this because the only way I can solve for zero, well that's not the only way, but a easy way to solve for zero is to factor this. Okay? So I'm going to do my x, my x. I gotta have two numbers that multiply to get negative 15, so one's gonna be positive, one's gonna be negative. I know my bigger number has to be negative because that middle number is negative. So three times five is 15, five minus three is two, yeah, okay. So then I'm gonna put the bigger number, five with the negative and two with, neg with, with the positive. So now I'm gonna just double check it. Whoops, sorry, three. See, I'm glad I double checked it. All right, so th um, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. Negative 5x, I'm always in your way, aren't I? Negative 5x plus 3x is negative 2x. There we go. Equals 0. So now I use my product property rule. 0 product property rule. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. If a... If a times b equals 0, then either x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0. So I write that. x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 5 equals 0, which means x is either equal to negative 3 or x is equal to 5. Again, on my graph, I know that would be, this would be my x-intercept here. And at 5, 3, 4, 5, and it would be there. So it would be something like that. Okay. Right? Yeah. Where does that 2x go? This? Yeah. So that, that's, that's Oh, it. that times that plus that. Okay, it's yeah. this, neg negative 5x plus 3x is negative 2x. Mm -hmm. Right? See what I mean? So that's basically the homework. That kind of stuff. Let's do a couple more. Can I erase? Okay, let me start over here. You will be doing a lot of these, and you'll be doing a lot of these in Algebra 2 as well. It's, it's a really important concept in Algebra. Um, what if I gave you this? Now, in, in, my, in the homework, I didn't bother putting it y equals. I said just equals 0. So... It just makes it, you just saves you one extra step. But let's say, let's say I'll do it like the homework now. Let's say I said x squared, <coughs> um, actually I want to do, I know what I want to do. Let's do um, x times 2x minus 7 equals 0. So this one is slightly different. It's the same idea. But this is slightly different. I don't have two binomials. I have a monomial, x. I have a binomial, 2x minus 7, right? But it's the same thing. If a times b equals 0, then one of them has to be 0. So either x equals 0 or 2x minus 7 equals 0. Again, they're just my two factors, right? So either x equals 0 or... 2x minus 7 equals 0. So that one's already done. x is 0, or then I'm going to add 7 to both sides, divide by 2. I have x is equal to 7 halves. Right? And I'll just leave it like that. That's fine. Right? Make sense? Wait, the so key is. Are you going to have to like, graph it? Um, you're not, no, you're not graphing any of these. Okay. 
No, you, I'm sorry. You don't have to graph them. I just I was doing that so you could see that 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 your what you're finding is the x-intercepts, right? Um, and then okay, one last one, and then we are I'll have hand up the whole. Um, how about um, let me just be sure I'm not throwing anything else at you that I'm forgetting about. Okay, good. Just make sure I don't give you one of those. Okay, let's let's say I gave you this x squared minus forty nine equals zero. What would you do, John? All right, so when you get these guys, it's a quadratic equation, but it's not a trinomial. So it's a binomial, and it's a negative sign. So the first thing you ask when you see a binomial wait, 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 quadratic wait, wait, wait. negative sign, you ask, is it the difference of two squares? Sure enough, it is. Okay, so what is that? How would you do that, John? Difference of two squares. The square root of this is? Uh, the square root of that is x. Okay. The square root of this is? 9. I mean 7. 7. So you do x, 7. Now what do I do with the signs? Plus and minus. Plus and minus. Because that way the negative 7x plus 7x cancel each other out so you have no middle term. Right? So now that equals 0. So then you'll find either x plus 7 equals 0 or x minus 7 equals 0, which means x is either equal to negative 7 or x is equal to 7. Okay? Well. So that's huge. And that is, that's all I, that's the lecture for today.